Hello, everyone. No, you haven't. I'm just getting everything set up. Oh, gosh, I'm so anxious right now. It's at times like this, I wish I did drugs like weed or something. But, yeah, I really didn't want to do this, but given everything that has just happened, I don't really have much of a choice, sadly. I mean, I just... I don't know what else to do. I really didn't want this drama. I didn't. But it feels like it's being forced upon me. And I'm doing this at the very least to tell my side. Because there's always two sides to every story. And a lot of people right now are making me out to seem like some kind of villain. Some kind of horrible person. I've seen the comment section of a uh, fan wars video, and I'm not gonna lie, there was some pretty nasty stuff said. Now I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, people are saying mean things about me. Like it's just it's more so like how quick people are to judge. To assume that I'm this evil person and it just blindly go along. Like this, this feels almost like a situation of outrage culture, you know? Because I just, I can't help but to notice, and I don't know if this is an example of outrage or not. I'm going to try to be as careful as possible with my wording because it seems like no matter how much I try to not cause problems. It seems like every time I open my mouth, I get myself into trouble. I'm going to try as hard as I can possibly be to be as clear and careful as possible so no one can take me out of context. Because there are a lot of things being said about me and some of it is fair, but some of it is just absolutely just unacceptable. And it makes some of these people look no better than what they think I am. I often am seen as a hateful, angry stereotype that just wants to go around pissing people off and hurting people for no real reason. When that could be further but the truth. Now, we're going to be responding to some videos and some tweets for the most part. And I'm going to do what I can to not only explain myself, but also take accountability for anything I may have done that could be viewed as wrong. And I decided to make this a stream so anyone can interact with me. And hopefully we can have a good discussion and this can end peacefully because I don't like drama. I really don't. I don't want this drama. I don't. I hate it. I don't like going around, start, contrary to popular belief, I don't like starting fights with people. I don't like starting drama with people. I go out of my way to avoid it, but it seems like sometimes I'm dragged into it rather I want it or not. So I want to make this perfectly clear right now by the way can you guys hear me all right
Okay, good. I just I just wanted to double check. Okay. So we're going to get started soon. We'll start with Fan Wars video and we'll go from there, but I'll give a brief so I would say I'll give a brief rundown, but he kind of does that in his video. I mean, I really don't like that this drama is even happening at all. Sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to calm my nerves. And here's the thing. Another thing I want to make clear before we begin. I don't want any of you to feel that you have to take sides. And I don't want any of you to defend me if I have genuinely done something objectively wrong. Even if you support what I do because it doesn't do me any favors and it doesn't do you any favors and I don't want you to feel that there is a side that you need to take form your own opinions of what you think about this situation don't let anyone try to don't let me try to persuade you otherwise don't let fan war or anyone else who's involved in this try to persuade you otherwise like if they say something that's objectively correct then that's fine but if they're trying to say something that's incorrect lie to you manipulate you anything like that that could be perceived as that then don't do it just form your perspective I swear, every word I say is making my heart race. I really hope I don't have a panic attack. So, let's begin. I'll keep my eye on the chat. In fact, let me try something here. Okay, that's not going to work. I'll do my best to keep an eye on the chat where I can. Hi guys, I am making this video not out of a want to, but a need to. I feel that okay, to start off, why do you need to make this video? What need is there to make it? You don't need to make this video. You are not obligated to make this video. Nobody is telling you to make this video. What need is there for it? Like, why is a video that is instigating drama needed? Like, okay, you have a personal issue with me. That's fine. You're free to be offended or dislike anything I do or say. But why do you need to make this into a public spectacle? You do this a lot. Every time you have some kind of issue with me, you always make it a spectacle in front of your fan base. Why? For what reason is there to do that? Wouldn't it be far more reasonable to just come to me in DMs and just talk to me? Like what we've been doing the past couple days, and I honestly thought we were starting to make a breakthrough, but then you go back to your old habits. Like, sometimes it feels like I'm dealing with an alcoholic or someone who keeps doing drugs and they keep telling you like they're not going to fall back into their behaviors or patterns and they do it anyway like i keep thinking like he'll eventually stop this but he does it anyway like i don't understand 
Like even after watching this video, and I watched this video when I was on my break at work, why do you need to make this video? Like, how is this any different from any other of the times you've taken offense to things that I've said, honestly? Like, you don't need to make any video. A need is something you absolutely must have. You need food. You need water. You need air or you will die. You don't need to make videos. You want to make a video. Like, I will ask you, especially if you are watching this stream, please tell me, why does this video need to be made? Because as you've seen, all it's done is just escalate things into drama. Even someone in your comment section said, why make this video? It's unnecessary drama. And it's just unpleasant for everyone involved. It's not good for me, it's not good for you, it's not good for Enigma, and it's not good for Raven. I mean, let's just keep going. I don't want to focus too much on one point, otherwise we're going to be here forever. That just needs to be addressed. As you are aware, for a while I asked another channel named Kimi Morris Trap Brothel, formerly known as Ancap Otaku. This is another thing that's really starting to get on my nerves. And I'm sick and tired of having to explain this. Stop calling me and Kapotaku. Stop it. That is not my name. I am so sick and tired of having to explain this to people. Stop calling me that. My name is Kimimura. If that's too difficult for you to say, then just say Kimi. Like, I'm sick of being called by that name. Some people always say, a.k.a. and Kapotaku. No. That was only ever a temporary placeholder name that I used for my channel. My channel. It was a placeholder name. And yet everyone keeps calling me it and it's driving me crazy. Like, I don't ask for much. I really don't. But could you at the very least be bothered to at least get my name right? Like, I just... Please stop calling me Ann Kapotaku. I cannot stress that enough. Give me constructive criticism on how to improve fan. It got so bad that I left the group he made for me, and our private conversations got pretty vicious. And while I still stand by my decision, in the private we did get some good blood back between us. But what he did recently brought that bad blood back and the worst part is, it wasn't even something directed towards me. But for context purposes, I... And this is something I cannot stress enough. You are making a video about some drama that has nothing to do with you. Why? Like, it's one thing, like, to... I guess like you want to document it because you think like what I said is really bad or whatever, but by the nature of YouTube, you have to know that this will just cause drama that you will inevitably be a part of. Why do it? Like It just seems to me like you're getting outraged on others' behalf. Now sure, you're free to be offended by what I say. I'm not going to get mad at you for that, but I don't understand, I just, Discord chat where they talked about Enigma's videos on him 
And from what Enigma said, they just used the few flubs he made in the video to discredit his arguments, and would just keep talking about things irrelevant to the conversation, like his choice in the Avatar background. Is it this that got me to make this video? It's worth noting that that is very much untrue. I made myself quite clear in that Discord chat what my issues were with the video. Now, I acknowledged some of the criticisms that I felt were valid and helpful, but there were so many things in his video that were either useless or hypocritical, which of course I'm going to block out. A couple of examples of this is he criticized a thumbnail I did not make, complete waste of time. He criticizes me for having filler in my videos, but he takes almost two to three minutes just to start a video or even get to the point because he pads it out with these skits and this intro that is not necessary. Now, I will admit in the past, I used to have an intro of my own and people didn't like it. So you know what I did? I got rid of it. So again, he says like, I didn't address any of his arguments. I did. And I even told him some of it was fair. Yes, I acknowledge that I do talk slow, and rather that is out of my control or not, I can use tools at my disposal like speeding up my voice, which I have done so in newer, more, re more recent videos. I've done my best to edit out any pauses or unnecessary bits and to speed up my voice because yes, I do talk slow. I acknowledge that. That's one of the things about my depression, and I hate it. But at the same time, he's pretending like I've just been ignoring him. I've seen his comments. He genuinely thinks I'm ignoring him. And that I have made no efforts to take his criticism to heart. And again, some of his criticism was outright useless. One of his criticisms involved the way that I talk. He even made fun of certain mannerisms, like a weird tick I have in which I repeat myself or I stutter, which is something I have little to no control over. I explained this to him, that it is a tick of mine, and he felt the need to mock me for it, to which... It ended up leading to him saying, after a lot of discussion, that I don't think that autistic people should be made fun of. Okay, so I told him simply, then stop making fun of it, because if he did any research on me like he claims that he did, he would have been well aware of the fact that I suffer from depression, or that I have autism, or ADHD, among other things. I have made this knowledge public. And yet somehow he just makes assumptions, which drives me nuts because he... Hold on. because Let me regain my thoughts. Because Fish over here will sit here and say that me making assumptions about people is bad, but he makes assumptions about me. He can't properly do his research about me, and when I criticize him for it, he tries to say, oh, it's not related to the discussion. Oh, I'm trying to deflect or something like that. No, dude, there were problems with your video too, and you need to acknowledge them. Otherwise, you just look like a hypocrite. <sighs> like the audacity to make fun of the way someone speaks and to treat it like it's a valid form of criticism like where do you get off on that like I have you could say a lot about me I you will never see me make fun of someone's 
mannerisms or the way that they speak. That's not criticism. It's not. Because you're tr telling me to try to control something I don't have any control over. And if you are autistic, like you implied that you are, then why would you think at any point that it's acceptable to do that? And keep in mind, this all started because they thought that I was saying offensive things or being derogatory towards a friend of his. Yet, when it comes to making fun of me and saying potentially offensive things about me, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, it's just criticism, dude. Why don't you stay on topic? It's frustrating to no end. And if you want a second opinion on this, you can ask one of my good buddies, Michael Hull. He once, while we were on Skype, we watched his video together and he found some of the points to be absolutely unbearable and frustrating. He said the painful, he said the video was painful for him to watch at times. And if you want his perspective on it, you can ask him about it. I'm sure he'll be in the chat if you want his thoughts. Don't worry, we'll get to this in a little bit, but for some reason Enigma felt the need to make some kind of song response to me. Like, as my brother pointed out to me, this guy is seemingly thirsty for my attention because he keeps making videos about me, and he told me that in one of the videos he watched, he said that, I don't know if you saw my first video, like, as if he's trying to get my attention or get some kind of response out of me. I don't know if that's what he wants or not. But it's funny how he considers himself tenacious, but yet he says he gives up after two videos and a Discord response. Like, really, dude? Like, why even bother if you're just going to give up just like that? Like, that tells me you must give up on things quite easily. Like, you're basically just rage quitting. But we'll get into this more later. It's worth noting, I had no idea that this person was even friends with Enigma. That would have been something that would have been nice to know. But I guess all these people that keep making responses to me, they all seem to be connected for some reason. Shom, Enigma, and now this girl. I, I don't know why these three are all connected. I don't know if it's just some coincidence or what. I'm guessing the reason is because they just keep sharing videos around that they feel the need to comment on, and for some reason they feel the need to keep co co going after videos on my channel, which is fine, I don't have a problem with it. But it would have been nice to know that this person was a friend of Enigma's, because he at no point ever mentioned this, and at no point did anyone ever mention this to me when this video was brought to my attention. Sadly, Michael, it looks like we might have to avoid words like cringe in this stream because remember, a lot of this is being started, spoiler alert, because words like cringy was used. And that word is going to come into play a lot throughout this stream. Yes, sadly, one of the things that instigated this drama was the use of words like cringy. I wish I were making that up. Like that, and this is where it gets disgusting. 
It is worth noting, at no point did I say I disliked the fact that a video was made about me. That is not true. When people make videos about me, I'm more interested than annoyed. Now, sure, sometimes when they make... Oh, shit. Did I forget to turn the fucking display on? Oh yeah, I'm just going to point this out. The fact that he provides no screenshots is frustrating because that which can be claimed that can be with that which can be asserted without evidence can be disproven without evidence. So, why not show these screenshots of me supposedly doing these things? Because for all your audience knows and for all my audience knows, you're lying about it. Now, if anyone is interested, I'll gladly show the screenshots in the stream for the sake of transparency. But seriously, though, that was just really lazy on your part to not even provide this. Because it will just lead to people making assumptions that you may be lying. Like that, 
And this is where it gets disgusting. Again, as I just said before I got a little bit stressed out, again, I was not upset about this in the slightest. I've made it perfectly clear on multiple occasions, and even her little friend, Shom, can attest to this. I am not upset when people make responses to me. Now, if they make responses to me without any constructive criticism, or they just outright insult me or drag my character through the mud, then yes, I might get a little bit irritated. However, though, there is no evidence to assert that I was mad about this. I wasn't. Now, sure, there were a couple of things about the video itself that bugged me, and I was even considering making a response, but I felt like there wasn't enough to justify a response video, so I just left some comments in her comment section, which is what led to this situation, sadly. But no, I was not upset about the video at all. Ask her friend Shom, or however you pronounce his name. I welcome criticism, and I'm a good sport about it. As long as your criticism is valid, I don't mind. The reason why I was a little bit more annoyed with Enigma compared to other people who have made responses to me is because I felt some, not all, but some of his criticism was useless or just wasn't criticism at all. Or he told me things I have already been told a million times before. So yeah, I got a little bit annoyed. And it feels like the guy was baiting me into a response. Now, I don't know if that's what he was doing, but my brother has his suspicions that he just wants to bait me into a response to him. For what reason, I do not know. Then why are you making this video? It just comes off as virtue signaling or you getting angry just for the sake of getting angry. Or you're getting angry on other people's behalf. Because you are making a video against someone who actually is LGBT. Many of my subscribers are LGBT. And if you don't have the best view on these people then why try like it almost feels to me like you're just making this video just to make yourself look good because you know your views aren't the best now i don't know if that's the case or not again i can only speculate however again i would ask you if you know your views on the community isn't the best which i'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing to not have good views on the lgbt community there are genuine criticisms and issues to be had with the lgbt community now this is not to say that this is anything against lgbt people the lgbt community is a completely separate entity as it should be and it does have its problems now, I don't know what his views are on LGBT people, admittedly. I don't think he's ever explained them before. But moving on. But here's the thing. I do not let what I think dictate how I judge others. Who a person is is more important than what they are. But what Kini said to them... Exactly, Fish. Who they are is more important than what they are. And if you paid attention to my comment, that's what I was trying to get across to Raven. Don't let your sexuality be all that there is to you. Be proud of who you are, not what you are. That's what I was trying to get across. 
Now, I can acknowledge I could have used certain words to make this more clear, and I'll get into that in a little bit when he shows the screenshots. And yes, I will take accountability for the fact that I did make some poor word choices, and I should have made myself far more clear and used better word choices. However, what I said to her was not out of malice. Not at all. I'm LGBT myself. For what reason do I have to attack another LGBT person? Like, that, that's just completely pointless. And people should take pride in who they are and not get so caught up in what they are. Because we live in a generation where especially young people these days feel the need to slap a label on themselves and make that who they are. A lot of, like, like, this is mostly the fault of things like identity politics. People care more about things like their skin color or their sexuality rather than who they are as a person. And if she had some kind of discourse with me or made any attempt at all to have a conversation with me or even reach out to me, I would have explained myself that that's all I was ever trying to get across to this individual. The fact that this individual is bi or gay is not a concern to me. It's not an issue to me. Why should it be an issue? And that's what I wanted to get across because I had my speculation that this individual... And here's the thing, this is where I say a lot of the misconception comes in, and why I find it frustrating that they made no attempt to try to understand my side of the story before starting this drama with me. Now, here's how I saw the video. I thought that she found that she may possibly be bisexual. And this is another thing about the video. She's not even sure if she's bisexual. She said she thinks she might be based on some role play that she's done, which even then, role play is not really the best way to gauge your sexuality, you know? Now, if she, like, got together with, like, one of her girly friends or something like that and, like, kissed her or something like that, or, like, she felt, like, some kind of romantic or sexual lust for her, that would be another thing. But she was going off of role play, and I just... This might just be a personal thing, but I've never been one to take role play all that seriously because most role play, at least internet role play, it's just texting at the end of the day. I mean, it's basically no different than phone sex, you know? And as, I exp as you will see in my comment, I said that the real thing is way different than some role play. Like, it's a whole nother story altogether when, like, you're physically there. Like, like actually, like, exploring those aspects of you, you know? And... And sure, you could possibly argue that it was unfair of me to make an assumption about this individual. That I will not take away from anyone. But all I... Sorry, my stupid antivirus crap. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. All I was really trying to get across was, if you are bisexual, fine. But... What is the point in making a public spectacle get back up? What's the point in making a public spectacle about it? You know, like, it's one thing, like, if you come out to, like, some friends, some family. I mean, I can kind of understand that. But I've just, I've never really understood the mentality of people that make, like, coming out videos on YouTube. Because, at least from my perspective, it comes off as people seeking attention. Now, that may not be the case for every person, and I made that clear in my comment that some people will use coming out videos as a way to get easy attention or sympathy or support. 
And that's what it kind of came off as to me. And when I watched the video, one of the first things that happens is she says, this video may be triggering for those who are homophobic. And when someone, one of her own fans said in her live chat, like TMI, like she said, oh, well, if you have a problem with it, then just go away. It's it like it came off as borderline SJW in the way that she was behaving and she was so giddy as if she just won the lottery or something, you know? It didn't come off as, like, a serious thing. Like, think about it. Like, compare if you've seen her video to my stream right now. She didn't sound nervous. She didn't sound concerned or anything like that. She sounded like a kid on Christmas, and it was difficult for me to take the video seriously, you know? Like, you can contrast that with how I'm feeling right now. I'm extremely nervous. I'm anxious. I'm stressed out. And it's a stark contrast. Like, Fish tries to justify this by saying that well, for some people, it's about overcoming, like, insecurities or something like that. That's all well and good. But here's the thing, though. I didn't get that vibe from her. At no point did I get the vibe that she was nervous, insecure, or anything. So her actions, to me spoke of someone seeking attention. And this is a common tre trend on YouTube. You can find many videos on YouTube of people doing coming out videos and some of them might be legit, but others just come off as someone wanting attention or trying to throw themselves some kind of pity party, you know, or they'll make it all melodramatic or something like that. And at the end of the day, rather you're insecure about your sexuality or not, and clearly she isn't insecure. If she's all happy and giddy about it, she clearly has seemed to come to terms with this. All right, bruh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you around. I hope you'll be able to watch the rest of this stream when it's finished uploading. And I'm sorry for any of my fans who have gotten dragged into this drama. As I said on my Discord, none of you deserve this, and I didn't want this. But it is what it is, sadly. Anyway, I digress. So back to my point, that's how I kind of saw it. Now, rather you think that's an unfair assumption or not, that was my perspective. And I know she was saying, like, it's an important video, but here's the thing. Actually, I'll just keep moving forward. We'll get to the comment, and then you guys can see for yourself, you know? I don't want to drag these out too long because I don't want this stream to be four hours long. It's unacceptable. It should be unacceptable to anyone. It hurt them so badly, she had to disable the comments just so she didn't have to look at them. Oh. Like, look. Disabling comments, unless you are receiving, like, severe harassment, is just never good because it just, it makes you look weak or like you're unwilling to accept criticism. And I apologize if that seems harsh, but here's the thing. If you're willing to disable your comment section... It shows that you don't have much strength in your beliefs or that you're unwilling to hear opposing perspectives. Now, look, if what I said hurt her, I'm sorry. I did not mean any offense when I made that comment. I really didn't. I didn't want to hurt this person. I don't like hurting people. Anyone who knows me knows that I believe in the best that humanity can be. And I always want to help people be the best person that they can be. 
It's just who I am as a person. And the fact that... Fuck. The fact that there are people out there that genuinely think that I'm some awful, evil person, it, it hurts me inside. Because it makes me feel like everything I do to try to be a helpful, kind, caring person is just meaningless. Because all it'll take is a few words that people... All it will take is a few words that people find offensive and then all of a sudden... I'm a monster. And... You can see the comments for yourself in the comment section. Some people genuinely think that I'm a monster or that I'm evil. And regardless of if you agree with what I said or not, the, to say that what I said makes me some kind of awful person or what I did is unacceptable, I'm not going to lie. It's a bit ridiculous. Like, you would think that with the way... You would think that with the way he's talking that I said, like, some awful homophobic stuff where I told them to go end their own life or something. Or that I harassed them. But I did not. And as you will see, this person genuinely felt threatened by me even though I did nothing to even imply that I was any kind of danger and I did not want to hurt this person and if they felt hurt by me why didn't they just reach out to me anyone who knows me knows like ask Connor Remember the almost drama that happened between me and him? When one of his fans suggested that, we, that me and him should just talk things out. Thankfully, he did. He reached out to me on Discord. We had a good conversation. We came to an understanding. And we were able to come to the conclusion that it was all a big misunderstanding. And thankfully, the drama was avoided. Go ask Connor Diesel for yourself. I am not an unreasonable person. If you believe that I have harmed you in any way, just come talk to me. I'll gladly hear you out. And if I've done something wrong, I will take accountability. But to block me, to make videos like this, it doesn't help. It escalates things. It leads to people making assumptions about people. None of, all of this could have been avoided if anyone, Enigma, Fan War, or even Raven just simply talked to me. But sadly, because of this generation, nobody wants to communicate with anyone. Because social media gives people the tools to create echo chambers and only hear who they want to hear. It's almost impossible to have a discussion with people nowadays. You have to practically walk on eggshells around people because they will just block you outright. This person didn't even bother to talk to me. She flat out admits on her Twitter, which we'll get into, that she just blocked me. Stays there. 
most people do these types of videos simply for the attention. Because for some reason we have this generation that thinks that it makes them special to be LGBT. It doesn't. The second difference is I have actually kissed, gone out, and had sex with boys and girls. You have done roleplay. Like, could you make it any more obvious that you are a virgin, or probably have never actually dated someone or been with someone seriously? What is the point of this video? The real thing is a whole lot different from roleplay. You are just sending texts. That's all you're doing. It's just words. You are not actually kissing anyone. You are not actually having sex with anyone. It's a completely different story in real life. Are you seriously implying that people are going to hate you because you came out as bi? It's not that big of a deal. I don't know if you know this, but homophobia is almost entirely non-existent. We live in the most tolerant era for LGBT people possible. Nobody's going to throw you away like if they're your friend, they're likely not to care. What is it any of their business who you get wet to or not? Dude, what the heck? This is the full context. Now, we'll take a brief pause. I want all of you who are in the chat to give your perspective on what you think of this. Do you think that I was in the wrong or not? Now, sure, I can personally see how some of these words could have been perceived as an attack. I won't lie about that. However, though, sorry, but anyway, like, I can see how some of these words could have been seen as cruel. But that was not my intention. There were people that apparently got the vibe that I was being aggressive towards her. I was not. And thankfully, once again, you can ask Michael Hole. You see, this is the interesting thing about it. The very same night this occurred, I was on a video call with Michael. And I had screen share on the entire time he saw everything he saw the comment he saw me look through the comment section and all that and you can ask michael right now was i at any point aggressive or angry because you don't have to just take my word for it we have an eyewitness to the events that occurred that night and if you're going to try to disregard what he says, then I don't know what to tell you. Because he was there. He knows exactly how things went down. And I firmly believe that this is once again another example of someone taking me out of context. This happens all the time every single time like especially with fan war anyone who knows my history with fan war will know that he will take anything i say out of context and make it seem way worse than what it actually is and it's not just with fan war people have done this every single time like you, you know what honestly this situation reminds me of it reminds me of that key and peel skit called um misunderstood text where the character's fr best friend is texting him and he's reading the text and he thinks that his friend is being an asshole to him when his friend is just being like all cool and chill and it ends up leading to him getting all angry and it ends with him going to the bar with a nail bat because he thinks they just agreed to a street fight. That's basically what this reminds me of. 
Very humorous, but that's what this reminds me of. Raven read my comment and clearly got the wrong vibe. She clearly must have thought that I was being aggressive, hateful, or angry when that could have been the furthest but the truth. Again, ask Michael. I was 100% calm. Like, yeah, I thought parts of the video were a little bit cringy, but that's about it. And even then, is saying that something is cringy really all that bad? Let's continue. What gives you the right to make this video indirectly sending people to attack me and say horrible things about me? Just saying. And even then, I ask you, in what way was I insensitive? Because this is another thing that's frustrating, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but you need to take a page out of Enigma's book. You don't explain. In what way was what I said insensitive? Please, tell me. Because just saying that something was insensitive doesn't make it so. Please explain it to me. See, when I think that something is cringe, I just think it's, a, it's either embarrassing or something that makes you roll your eyes, you know? At least that's how I see cringy. The concept of something being cringy has become a little bit subjective because... People seem to have their own meaning of what they deem to be cringy. And that's kind of fair, because to a certain extent, something being cringy can be similar to something being funny or something being scary. It can absolutely be subjective for some people. This is another thing I always have to deal with. Him telling me that uh, him telling me that I don't respect people's opinions. Why? Well, it usually boils down to I disagree with someone. Now, sometimes it's more than just that. But in what way am I not respecting this person's opinion like i here's the thing opinions are like assholes everyone has one also you are not entitled to respect you may not like that but that's just the way the world is you are not entitled to have people respect you you need to do something to make them you need to do something to make people believe that they, to make people believe that they can respect you. I'm not entitled to respect. You're not entitled to respect. None of us are. And sure, that doesn't necessarily mean that people have free range to be rude to you. That's just as unacceptable, but you also cannot just tell people, you need to respect my opinion. No. If people don't want to respect your opinion, they don't have to. Now, sure, this doesn't give them the right to be rude. However, once again, I know I might be repeating myself, like I said, that weird tick I mentioned earlier. But again, you cannot just expect people to respect your opinion. Because here's the thing. If everyone has an opinion, and if every opinion is equally valid, then every opinion is equally shit. Do something to
to make your opinion have some kind of value or something to be respected. You know? That's what you don't seem to understand. Is you seem to think that everyone is entitled to have their, their opinions respected at all times. And here's the thing. I will give people respect if they give me respect. You know why I don't respect some of your fans? Because they don't respect me. I live by the golden rule. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. When someone treats me with disrespect, that tells me that they themselves do not want to be treated with respect. Now, again, you're free to disagree with that outlook if you want. Like I said, form your own perspectives. You don't need to see things from my perspective. I just want everyone here to at least understand how I see things. It will give you a little bit more insight into how I think. Well, let's let the jury decide. Now, I know all my fans are not here, but for those of you who are, what do you guys think of this? I want you guys to speak for yourself. Let's answer his question. So put in the chat, what do you guys think of all this? And don't hold back. I want you guys to be honest with me. And I will take it. Don't worry about my emotional state. Okay? Just, I want to hear it from you guys. You deserve to have your voices heard. Oops. <sighs> How do I get myself into these messes? All I want to do is just entertain people. Is that really so much to ask for? Well, Enigma might disagree with you on that, but I can see where you're coming from because Enigma sure as hell didn't respect me enough to not mock me for my tics and mannerisms. I mean, you want to talk about respect... Why didn't you call out Enigma when he disrespected me? You know? But here's what it comes down to. I'm going to explain myself quite clearly now my intention with this YouTube comment which someone in your comment section tried to say I should have thought about what I said before I said it I did again ask Michael 
I thought very long and very hard about that comment. I even re-edited it on multiple occasions so that way what I was saying would not be lost in translation. And yet despite all of that, it still managed to get lost in translation. Someone still managed to make me look like I was trying to hurt this person, which I was not. And the fact that you would insinuate that I go around wanting to make people hurt, that makes me sick, fish. I don't like seeing people hurt. I care a great deal about my fellow human beings. And it's funny, you want to talk to me about, oh, you make unfair judgments about people, yet you will do the same crap to me all the time. You will just always assume the worst of me. You always assume I'm out to get people. You always assume I'm, I, I don't respect people's opinion. You always assume I'm just some asshole. And I hate to have to say this, but I'm starting to think, Fish, that my brother was right about you. That you were just bad news from the very beginning. I'm starting to think maybe he was right. Because, you know what? It is not lost on me that you consider yourself a shit poster. And it also is not lost on me that shit posters like to start things with people, like drama. Because sometimes when I'm talking to you, it feels like I'm talking to someone that's deliberately trying to piss me off. Now, I'm not trying to make unfair assumptions about you, but at the same time, if you want to play this game, it goes both ways. Same is true for Raven. Same is true for Enigma. If he wants me to take him seriously, don't make fun of my mannerisms and the way I speak. He wants me to pay attention to his criticism. Don't make, don't make meaningless criticism that is useless. I cannot express enough how frustrating this is. Again, assumptions are bad, yet Raven makes an extreme assumption on her end, and yet she's treated like the victim in all this. And again, you are actively egging on and fueling this drama. So, you need to take responsibility. If this drama escalates any further, just know that you are partially responsible. Now, I'm not putting all the blame on you. However, you willingly stoked the flames, making things far worse than they needed to be. You made that choice. In the same way, I made my choice to leave that comment. Now, back to what I was saying. The point I was trying to get across with that comment is don't let your sexuality define who you are. As I said earlier, you are more than your sexuality. You are more than your skin color. Like, let me ask you all something. Let's say I told you that I was a white bisexual crossdresser. What would that tell you about me as a person? 
Go ahead and leave your thoughts in the live chat. There are no wrong answers here. Because I'll tell you that if someone just met me and all I told them was, oh, I'm a white bisexual crossdresser, that honestly tells them nothing about me. It's surface level at best. But sadly, we live in this generation of identity politics where sadly young people will go through identity crises and they will think that their sexuality, their skin color, their sex or whatever is what defines who they are. That couldn't be further from the truth. Now, I will be fair, I could have phrased things better. That's fine. I will acknowledge that. Because here's the thing. Anyone who actually pays attention to my content knows that I struggle from various disorders. One of them being depression. And one of the consequences of me having depression is I often tend to have a more nihilistic, pessimistic view of the world. Now, that's not really my nature because I'm more optimistic, but due to my depression, it gives me more of a pessimistic view of things. So, when I said that it was meaningless, sure, that may have been a not so great thing to say. I can absolutely understand why someone saying like, oh, your skin color or your sexuality is meaningless. I can see how that can come off as harsh, cruel, or aggressive. What I was trying to say, and again, if you pay attention to the comment, I s clearly state that it shouldn't matter because that's absolutely true. If you're bisexual, gay, lesbian, or whatever, it, sh it, it shouldn't matter what others think because at the end of the day, it is what it is. You're, you love who you love. That's just all there is to it. And anyone who would try to disown you based on something as meaning, something as just so surface level as your sexuality just says a lot about that person. But to that same token, when you make your entire identity around the fact that you're gay, straight, bi, black, white, Mexican, Japanese, or whatever, it makes you come off as a shallow token. And I thought that's what we were trying to fight against. Shallow depictions of people. Because that's what I honestly thought Raven was doing. That she was just thinking to herself that I'm bisexual, this is who I am. It's what you are, but it's not necessarily who you are as a person. Ask yourself this, Raven, if you ever see this live stream. Who are you as a person? And I don't mean like your ethnicity, your skin color, your sexuality, or whatever. Who are you? What is your character? What defines you as an individual? Now, sure, on the surface... There's nothing wrong with taking pride in things like your sexuality, but you need to understand that it's very, very surface level. And I just wanted to make sure that she understood this very simple message. Raven... You are more than your sexuality. Don't let your sexuality define who you are. Don't get caught up in identity politics. 
I think that that's a very fair message that anyone can get behind. Be more than your sexuality. Be more than your skin color. Show us who you are as a person, who you are as a character. What defines you? I don't see how in any way that message is really insensitive. Now, sure, I could see how things like saying like it's meaningless or it's cringy could be seen as insensitive. But here's the thing, and this is something neither of these three will point out to you. And it, I find it very sad that they never even felt the need to mention this. So this good friend of Raven made a comment implying that she is potentially living with abusive, toxic parents. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know what their life is like. But that's what they seemingly implied because they said that their parents, that that person's parents didn't want them talking to their best friend. Now, I think all of us can agree that that's very sketchy. You should be free to talk to whoever you want to talk to, especially if they're your friend. And that seemed kind of suspect to me, so I advised that individual that they should probably call somebody because their parents could potentially be abusing them. Like, does that really sound like the words of someone who is hateful or angry? That I genuinely took time to take notice of that comment and express concern? Again, I will take accountability for any of the things I have said that was insensitive. But there was no malicious intent with my comment. Now, you're free to disagree with the message in the comment. That's perfectly okay. But again, try to look at things from my point of view. I get this person who makes a response to me, and I decide to check out their other content, and I see a, I see a coming out video. I check it out because they say it was an important video, so I decide to check it out. And the person didn't seem to be taking the situation seriously, and... I thought that maybe this person was seeking attention or they weren't really taking it all that seriously because I, as a bi person, I felt that in some ways it was almost as if she was making a mockery of it. Now again, this is just speculation and again, I may very well be wrong, but that's what it came off as to me. And... Again, the fact that even within her own video, she says she might be bi because of some role play. I'm over here thinking, here was another thing I thought. That this person came off as kind of young to me. And I don't mean this in an insulting way. Like she came off as someone very young who's still discovering things about herself. And she did some role play and then quickly jumped to the conclusion that maybe she's bisexual. But what was her basis for this? Did she kiss a girl? Did she have any lustful feelings for both boys and girls? Like, her basis for this was merely role play. And as I mentioned earlier, that's not always the best gauge for that kind of thing. And that's why I used that example that I did. I wasn't trying to flex that, oh, I've had sex with people and you haven't. Absolutely not. Again, I will acknowledge I could have worded this better. However, the point I was trying to get across was that real life is way different from text on a screen. It really is. Like, it's a whole different world when you're when you're actually kissing someone, you're actually dating someone, or you're actually having 
sex with someone. You can't always be certain. This is why many bi people will experiment. That's what I did. I ended up seeking relationships with both guys and girls. And I think it seemed like she was jumping to conclusions or again, based on her behavior, it felt like, again, she was just like, oh, I might be bi. <gasps> I can use this to make myself seem unique and different. That's what it just kind of came off as to me, you know? And again... I'm not necessarily begrudging her for thinking that she's bi. She may very well be bi. However, though, based on what I got from her video, I didn't get the vibe that she was taking it seriously or that she was feeling insecure, nervous, or anything like that. And like the way she was coming off, she was like, look, look at this, guys. Do you notice anything different? Do you notice anything different? It's like... It came off as like a kid trying to get their mother's attention or something like that, you know? I mean, if you've seen the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. But that was an honest thing she said in her video. Honestly, how can I look at that and not think this person is potentially just doing this for attention, you know? And I got the feeling that she wasn't taking things seriously. And here's another thing. Now, I will admit, I felt disrespected by Raven. And I'll explain why. And I want to make this perfectly clear. Me feeling disrespected had nothing to do with my choice to leave that comment. I chose to leave that comment because I felt it was an important message for Raven. I felt it was an honest thing that she should probably hear. But here's the thing. And people who are on my Discord may know about this. When I watched her video, she sent her... She, uh, damn it. She censored the word trap in both her video and the title and she did not call me by my name she even said that my name was sketchy she doesn't explain why so right out the gate yes i did feel disrespected by raven because here's the thing many of you know that I identify as a trap. I take pride in the fact that I'm a trap. In the same way that Raven clearly seems to take pride in her bisexuality. Yet it seems to me that Raven is willing to disrespect my identity as a trap. Now... I don't know this for certain. I asked this question and I didn't get a response from her. I said, why did you sense? I asked, why did you censor the word trap? Please don't tell me you're one of those people that believe that trap is a slur. Because sadly, there is a large amount of people who honestly think that trap is a bad word that needs to be censored. And as a result of this censorship, these people are trying to disregard people who identify as traps, which is highly disrespectful. Now, I do not know if that was her intention or not. Again, the lack of communication on her part is extremely frustrating. I cannot stress this enough. I got no answers for any of the questions that I asked. But here's the thing. Like I said earlier, you want to talk about respect, yet on occasions you have disrespected me, Enigma has disrespected me, 
And Raven has disrespected me. So I ask you, given that, do you still believe that you are entitled to respect? I ask you that. Now, I don't know if they're going to watch this stream or not. They probably won't. Knowing Raven, she seems like the type to just block out any criticism and not willing to hear the other side out. Let's continue on. Yeah, guess what? I'm not trying to hurt people based on their viewpoints either. Unless someone has a really terrible viewpoint, like pedophilia is okay, rape is okay, murder is okay, or something horrible like that, I'm not going to try to hurt anyone for their viewpoint. And even then, I'm not even going to hurt them for having those viewpoints because at the end of the day, we have freedom of speech. And I'm not going to try to hurt you for that. Just because I disagree with people, that doesn't mean I am disrespecting anyone. That doesn't mean I am trying to hurt them. I don't know how I can get you to understand this. I really don't. I try so hard. It seems no matter how many times I make myself clear, it's never enough. Once again, implying that I don't learn from my mistakes. Wrong. I do learn from my mistakes. I really do. I, I hate this, but some people may or may not be aware of this. But for those who don't. I will say this, I have a perfectionist problem. Yes, I am actually a perfectionist. I am very insecure about what other people think of me to the point where I will do anything in my power to not disappoint them, even to the point of driving myself to unhealthy degrees of mental distress. I spoke about this, how after getting criticism from Enigma, I have been taking, in, I have had to delay certain videos, like my top 10 favorite anime, which my fans have been looking forward to for a long time, but I keep editing it and re-editing it because I'm constantly ripping my hair out thinking to myself, is this good? Is that good? I constantly think to myself that no, this isn't good enough for my fans. They deserve better. I sometimes drive myself to near unhealthy insanity because of this. All of my life, I would always be punished for the most tiny of mistakes, even as a young boy. And as a result, it has led to me developing this perfectionist mentality. I believe that something must be perfect. Otherwise, it's, otherwise it's worthless. I constantly keep telling myself that this isn't good enough my fans deserve better. And a lot of people don't seem to understand this. I do take what people say into account. I constantly strive 
to be a better person. And the fact that you're insinuating that I don't learn from my mistakes and that I just go around hurting people is again insulting. Again, it shows you have a gross lack of understanding of who I am as a person. How is that any different from me making insensitive remarks towards Raven? What you're saying is just as insensitive towards me. You're unwilling to understand certain aspects about me. Implying that I'm something that I'm not. Or in the case of Enigma, using them against me saying, Ha ha, you talk weird. Or you repeat yourself. You're just like in sync. Ha ha. How is that any different? How is what some of your fans in your comment section saying any different? Like, let's say hypothetically I was the hateful, angry person you claim that I am. How are you any better by being just as hateful or angry towards me? Shouldn't you and your fans be focused on being the bigger men rather than trying to judge me? You say that judgment and assumption is bad, but you and your fans do the same thing. Look at your comment section, dude. How is what some of the people say in your comment section okay to you? It's just... I, I don't understand these people sometimes. Once again, baseless assertion. Let me ask you something, Fish. Have you heard of a little concept called Hanlon's Razor? The basic gist of it, for those who don't know what it is, it's basically a philosophical concept that says not to attribute malice to stupidity or ignorance. Now, that, now that may not be a verba verbatim definition, but for those of you who know what Hanlon's razor is, you know what I'm talking about. You are over here assuming malicious intent on my part. You act... As if I went in wanting to hurt this person. That is untrue. For what motive is there for me to hurt Raven? What do I get out of it? It does nothing for me. It makes me look like an asshole. It makes my fans not want to support me because I will look like an asshole. And it just makes people think that I'm toxic. For what reason do I have to go around intentionally hurting people? And another thing you fail to understand is this. Again, I hate that I have to bring this up. Because it just makes it look like I'm using this as a crutch. Or that I'm using it as an excuse even though I'm not. And make no mistake about it. This is not an excuse. It's just a simple reality. I am autistic. I am socially crippled. I do not understand things the same way other people do. What people view as socially acceptable 
does not always align with what is socially acceptable to me. For example, a simple example of this is all my life, I would always get told by my family members that I should not eat with my hands. It's rude and it's socially unacceptable, and I've never understood that. For me, it makes sense to eat with your hands unless you're eating something really messy, you know? Like, and people always tell me, like, no, that's a wrong thing to do. It's a simple example of how what someone will see as socially acceptable, I will not always see the same way. And even if I do do something socially unacceptable, I am sadly usually aware of it after the fact. Because I genuinely don't understand or it's difficult for me to understand. It's something I've had to deal with all my life. I was put into special ed classes because of this. I spent half of my I spent more than half of my elementary school years in special ed classes trying to learn to overcome this. And even to this day, I still struggle with it. And yet you are not able to understand the concept of Hanlon's razor. Not you, not Enigma, not Raven. Because you either don't want to, or you're making, or you're guilty of making the very same assumptions you accuse me of. Like, the fact that you did not make any attempt to talk to me about this is frustrating. You just assumed the worst in me. And again, you're free to be offended by what I said. However, the objective reality is I did not mean any malicious intent with that comment. I was trying to get what I felt was an honest important message for her to understand especially if she is as young as i have speculated her to be then that message will be important for helping her to grow mature and develop herself as a character as a person but people nowadays would rather assume the worst in people and i'm not going to act like i'm a perfect innocent little angel like rin pointed out to you I'm not perfect. As some people in your comment section said, I am just, I am a human being. I am not infallible. I am capable of flaws just like everyone else. And I acknowledge my flaws. I work very hard to overcome them. And it feels to me like you don't have the patience to allow me to better myself. Now, I don't know if that's the case or not. But either way, regardless of what you think, I'm not a bad person. Anyone who knows me personally can tell you that I'm not a bad person. If you have paid attention to my history, you would know I'm not a bad person. Now, yes, I'm a flawed human being. I screw up. I screw up a lot. Now, do I wish I could be perfect? Sure. But sadly, regardless of what my perfectionist mentality will tell me, I can't be perfect. And to set a standard of perfection for myself is unhealthy. The most I can do is acknowledge my flaws and live with them. That's all I can do. Don't worry, if you've showed up in the stream quite late, you'll, you can watch this from beginning to end when it's fully uploaded. This has been going on for over an hour and we just got through the first video, we still have one more video and some tweets to go through. Okay.
let's do this. Let's go over the next video. Oops. My bad. Go back. Now, most of this is going to be addressing my drama with Enigma, which is thankfully not as intense. However, it is equally as frustrating and stupid at times. And on the off chance that my brother is right about Enigma, that he just wants attention, then that's why I didn't bother giving him very much attention. And as you will see by both his comments and this video, he is clearly very upset about that. Sadly, this isn't going to be a fun stream. I mean, I know that sucks to say, but this needs to be addressed. So, let's just get this over with. Hopefully, this one will be a lot faster. And this is mostly just a song, so I can focus on the chat this time around. First off, right out the gate, no clue what he's talking about. You say the price of critique is a price you're not willing to take. What does that even mean? When have I ever implied anything like that? I value critique. I think it's very, very important. So right out the gate... Okay. Noting, I have not attacked Enigma, I have not attacked Sholmes, and it is debatable that I even attacked Raven. So stop acting like you're some kind of warrior, Enigma. You're not. You're someone who basically is coming off as someone who desperately wants someone's attention. You, there, this feels like to me, like you desperately want some bad guy or adversary to overcome or something like that. Now, I don't know if that's the case, but seriously, you're not being attacked, dude. So stop acting like you are. It is annoying. I didn't respond to your video because I didn't feel like it. And even when I did give you responses in the comments, that didn't seem to satisfy you. I don't know what you want. I took your criticism to heart. And I'm using your criticism to help improve my videos. And yet, you're still doing this to me. Once again, Baseless assertion, I have not ignored Enigma. Look in his comment section. Go to his Discord if you can get into his Discord. I can show you my DMs on Discord. I have not ignored you, dude. Stop pretending you're being ignored. Will never be changed by my 
Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I can understand being pessimistic, suffering from depression, but here's the thing. The future can change by your criticism. If your criticism is legitimate and helpful, it will make a difference. The fact that you would imply that your criticism can't change the future, that to me tells me you don't have as much confidence in yourself as you may make yourself out to believe. See, no matter what happens between me and fan war and me and death battle, I don't give up. People always tell me, I get this from my fans all the time. Why do you bother criticizing fan war? Why do you bother criticizing death battle? You know they're not going to listen to you, right? And look, they may be right. However, though, because I care. I believe.